Hey guys, it's Shala from Crafting Through the Chaos of Life. Thanks so much for joining me for another video. Today I thought I would pop on and quickly show you this really fun identification card that I created. Um, this is an idea that I saw off of YouTube by the channel called Sunset Crafts and More. And I'll try to remember to link it down below. And I just thought this was such a really cool idea. I love uh, the way she did these cards and I love how this one turned out. I did a little kind of prototype and now I'm going to do um, a few or one or two with you here on camera. Pardon my inky fingers. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. I hope you're all doing well and finding yourself in your crafty space today. Uh, so the first thing that we want to do is to start off with uh, a size of cardstock. You can do any cardstock you want. I think she used uh, some like map or travel cardstock. So it was kind of white on one side and um, had like a map image on the other, kind of almost reminiscent of a passport. I just ended up using some of this buff cardstock that I have a ton of. And I cut it down and I've cut these down to uh, they're three and a half by two and a half inches. Now they, this is about the standard size of say like a loyalty card, just a little bit bigger. And the ones that she made, I'm not exactly a hundred percent sure. I think hers were like four by six or something like that. I think they were the size of a project life card, but I just thought those were a little too big for what I kind of wanted them for. So I am using two and a half inches by three inches. And yeah, so I just did some inking, some stamping. I used some pieces from, or this piece here is from a Tim Holtz ephemera kit. Um, it came with a couple of these little photo images. I believe the gal that I watched used uh, photo booth, Tim Holtz photo booth pictures. But I also remembered I have these and I got these off of Etsy and they are from The Repair is the name of the shop and this is called Vintage Portrait Photos. So I totally forgot I had these but I think they're going to work really well to do little ID cards. Um, some of these smaller ones might work really well because this this photo is you know fairly big for the size of this card so maybe we'll use a smaller one of these uh, for our next one. Okay, so let's get started. Um, also, the stamps that I'm using are just literally a bunch of stamps that I kind of went through in my stash and pulled out different um, ones that would work. I've got some from like a planner kit. I've got some, this little swirl here from, this came out of a magazine, the Spring Borders stamp set. I also have these kind of little flourishes. Uh, this... I have, I've used this little stamp here. This is from, I believe this is from uh, maybe AliExpress or Timu. I'm not exactly sure. Um, and then if you have the Tim Holtz field notes, uh, this works really well. As you can see, I pulled a whole bunch off that I can use. I've got, you know, just a whole bunch of different, I've taken some of these stamps off. I don't know if you can see that with the glare, but yeah, just go through your stash and find uh, some stamps that might work for this. On this one in particular, I did all stamping and then I did some handwriting. The next one I'm going to do, I'm actually going to use my vintage typewriter to do it. So yeah, just go through your stash and see what stamps might work to create this type of identification card. Um, so yeah, okay, so let's get started. I want to first round my corners and I'm just using the large uh, corner round here for my, what is this thing called? This is the Katamaru Pro. I got this off of Amazon last year and I have a love-hate relationship with it. Uh, mine does not like to work if I push it from here. I have to push it directly here. So um, a little bit of fiddling. I think I think we're all on the love side of the relationship now. It seems to be working quite well now that I figured out what how it likes to work. Okay, I'm going to bring in my little waffle flower inking mat here. 
Uh, the gal that I watched, I think she inked hers up with um, Sage, whatever the Sage one is from Tim Holtz. I'm using Speckled Egg. I think this works well. It kind of has that bluish tint to it. And then I also did a little bit of um, stenciling as well. So let's go ahead and get this done. So first off, I'm just going to use this blending brush. And I'm going to go ahead and just cover one side of this, just ink it up. And it doesn't have to be perfect because, you know, the more uneven of it, I think the, the better it looks. It kind of gives that aged look to it. So just kind of give this a little bit of color to make it not so plain. Add a little bit of interest to it. Okay, that's not too bad. I like that. And the next thing I'm going to do is I have these stencils that are all like splatter and coffee dye type things. And I'm just going to use this one here. It's got some different kind of splotches on it. And I'll just lay this down like this. And then I'm just going to go over it again with another layer of this speckled egg, Distress Oxide. Just kind of adding layers of ink onto it. I think that should be good. Yeah, so you can kind of see it looks, looks kind of like watermarked there. Now, if you don't have these type of stencils, not a big deal. Just get your water bottle and spray some water into your hand and then just kind of drop it onto that Distress Oxide. It's going to react with the ink. And so we'll just let that sit just for a wee bit. And I will find my cloth wherever that went to. I seem to be misplacing things lately. I don't know what I did with my cloth. So I'm just going to use, sorry, I'm gonna grab Ooh, grab one that I see over here. Bear with me. I don't know where the other one went. It's completely escaped me somewhere. It's growing legs and walked off somewhere. So I'll just put my cloth down. And then you can see how it's got some more of that reacting here just with the water droplets. So I think that's pretty cool as well. This is just such a grungy cloth. I've got to clean that one. Okay. So now that we've done that part, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to use my Vintage Photo Distress Oxide and just ink up the edges. Just again to make it look a little bit on the older side. And a big shout out to my dear sweet friend Rosanna. She got me a new Distress ink pad. Um, I'm not using it yet. I just got it. Uh, she, she, she gave me that. I can talk actually she gave me several ink pads and some vintage books and uh, embossing folders so thank you so much Rosanna for spoiling me and giving me some gifts to play with I truly appreciate it she's such an enabler <laughs> okay and actually I do want to do the other side as well and I think I'm going to hit this with my ink gun or my ink gun not my ink gun my heat gun just because I did get a lot of water on there. So let me just pull that bad boy out. And I think I'm gonna, yeah, oh, got cords everywhere. I'm just gonna plug it in. Come on, get in the plug. Okay. I've got myself all tangled up here. Okay, so I'm just going to give it a little bit of a heat here. Okay, that should be good enough. Just wanted to dry some of those water droplets just so my ink doesn't kind of smear. Okay, the next thing we want to do is find a photo. 
And I think I want to use this guy. So I'm just going to cut this down and cut him out. He looks very kind of yellowy old. I suppose I could have printed this on photo paper. That probably would have given it just a step up of a more of a realistic look. But I think this will be fine too. Let's cut him straight. Or at least as straight as we can muster here. Okay. Just dump that off and we'll see if this is going to work. Yes. I think we could put him there. That would be nice. But I also want to mat him and I want to round his itty bitty corners. So I'm going to use my smallest little rounder here. There we go. And I have some leftover cardstock. Is that going to, oh, that'll work. Yeah. I just need a little bit of matting. So let's glue this guy on. And then we'll just kind of have like a little matting behind him. Actually put the pin back in. So yeah, I'm getting ready to go camping tomorrow. Oopsies. And I thought, oh, I saw this idea and I just had to do it before I left because it would, it would haunt me. The entire time I was camping, I'd want to be doing this. So at least I can get it out of my system before I go. There we go. And cut that down there and then we'll round the corners again. Just like so. Again, if you don't have a corner rounder, just use your scissors and just kind of round them off. Okay, and we'll give him a little bit of inking. There. Yeah, I think that looks good. And so on this one, we had her on the left-hand side. Let's do this dude on the right hand side. And we'll glue his little face down. I think these are gonna be so much fun to make and add to a journal. You can even do it kind of like passport style. And then have it like be a mini journal booklet, but in the front you can have it like a passport, right? I think that would be cool as well. Okay. Now, so for the identification, I just use this identification check and I'm only inking up the identification portion. And how I do that, if I can ooh, roll myself in here, is I'm just putting it on my block and I'm not putting the check part on the block, if that makes sense. So I'm just, can you see that there? I've got that check just hanging off of the block there. And then I will grab my ink. I'm just using this Memento Tuxedo Black. And then I'll just ink up this part. And then we will put down, make sure I didn't get the C. There we go. And we will stamp that down. There we go, identification, excellent. And I think I want this guy, I want him to be like a special agent. Maybe his agent number is 1929. 
Instead of 007, Agent 007, he's 1929. So let's put that right about here. And then on this one, I used the filed stamp and I stamped it in this um, festive berries. And then for this one here, I stamped in stormy sky. And I like that look. But I think I'm going to do this little seal. I'm going to do it red this time. Just kind of wipe it off. Because I had the blue on there earlier. I don't want it to come out purple. Give that a quick clean. And we'll ink this up with the red. And let's put that right about here. Super. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, and now we need something to go here. What do we have? Um, yeah, let's use... I was going to... actually do his name. So let's actually ink up. Is that going to be long enough? No. So I'm going to just do a quick pause and I'm going to actually type his name here. I'm going to come up with a name. I'm not sure what, what I'm feeling yet for his name, but I'm going to type his name right here and then I'll put the rest of the stamps down below. So let's pause for one second. Okay, so I am back and I have decided that his name is James R. Thibault. Yes. And he is, maybe he's a, maybe he's not a secret agent because a secret agent obviously wouldn't carry around their identification now, would they? Maybe he is uh, an agent for the, well, here we call it. CRA, Canada Revenue Agency, but I guess in the States it would be like IRS. Maybe he's an agent for the IRS. And we'll put this, yeah, we'll put this one on there. And I think I want to do this one in blue. So this is the stormy sky. And the stamping of it doesn't have to be perfect. I just kind of want to have it give the illusion that it has some information there that might be important. I'll try and line this up neatly, nicely. And we'll put that right about there. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yay! Can you see that? It's a little, little bit faint, but it kind of has that. You can see the watercolors or the like ink splotches shine through on there or show through. I love that. And I think it needs a little something down here. So let's use. Yes, this number looks quite nice. Let's go ahead and use that one. And that we'll just do in black as well. Perfect. So there we have, in a short amount of time, another really cool identification card. So we have Helen Rogers, who she signed her name. And we have Agent 1929, James R. Thibault. Aren't those great? And then you can journal on the back if you want. You can even 
give it a little bit of character, you can rough up the edges just a little bit. Make it look like it's been in somebody's wallet for some time. So we'll just kind of rough this up here. You don't want it to look too perfect because it's supposed to be old, right? And I'll just take this ink and ink up again where I kind of roughed up the edges. There. Does that look great? Oh, I love these. Let's do another one. And so let's kind of set everything back to where it needs to go. And we'll bring in our waffle flower mat again. I'm really liking the speckled egg for this. So it has that kind of blue tone to it that um, I think the green would look nice as well. I wonder, do I have, I have shabby shutters in distress ink. Should we try that? Let's try that just for something different. So we'll pull out one of our cards and I need a different inking brush because the one I have is blue. So I'm going to pause you for one second and grab my blue inking brush. Okay, I'm back and I have my green brush. I do apologize. The last time I popped on, I forgot to reconnect my microphone to my sweater here. And so it was maybe a little hard to hear me. I'm going to try and play around with that when I go to upload it to see if I can fix that for you. So I love these little blocks because they're handy to store, but they're hard to get the lids off for me. So this again is the Distress Ink Shabby Shutters. So let's see how this works. I'm not too sure. I, I'm really enjoying the Distress Oxides for this vintage type of thing. Um, it just seems to really, uh, I don't know, the ox, Oxides just really seem to work well. Okay, I like this too though, because it's looking super grungy. And old. So this is a contender as well. So yeah, even if you don't have the oxides, you definitely can use the Distress inks as well. It's just a different look. Like these definitely have more of a chalky feel to them, right? Like the Distress oxides do. And this one. I notice that with distress inks, if there's like flaws or certain things in the paper, it almost like watermarks it. Can you see that? Every paper just inks a little bit differently, I find. So um, you might not get as smooth of a, of a blend depending on what paper you use. Okay, let's bring back in our splatters. And... This is the one. Let's use this. Again, that just adds another another layer of interest to the card itself. Oh yeah, see, that looks super cool. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, and then maybe we'll just kind of tone it down just a little bit so it's not so in your face. Super. Okay. Love it. Oh, I'm going to get on a roll with making these. I can just tell. And let's use our, I use my large one. I think I used the large one. up now who do we want to use we need to find a person to use oh yeah that looks pretty cool compared to the blue one definitely a different look right I, I am leading to leading leading leaning oh my goodness words are so hard today leaning towards the the blue one though I kind of kind of looks like that old vintage document look I don't know 
Okay. Yeah, I think these are going to be really great. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, do we want to use this guy? He's pretty big. Let's see if we can find another smaller, smaller person in here. Hmm. I feel like her. I feel like this could be a student ID for her. Maybe it's like a university ID. Who knows? Maybe she's maybe she's taking a botany course or something. I don't know. Oops, I guess I better keep this to trim this out. I'm not going to, this kind of looks like it's a Polaroid. I'm not going to keep that bottom. I'm going to take that right off. Yeah, maybe uh, printing these on photo paper would have been a better look, but that's fine. There's always next time, because I know I'm definitely going to be making a lot more of these. There you go. It's so tiny. Got barely any paper to hang on to. There we go. And then let's back this as well. These guys here. Is that going to fit on here? Not really, it's not quite wide enough. So I'm gonna look in my scrap paper drawer, see if I can find a bigger piece of that stuff. Oh yes, I have lots. These little pieces come in handy for sure. That's why I never throw them out. Okay, I want to actually ink this. And then we'll glue it down. I suppose you could use a glue stick as well to glue these, but I just like the, the art glitter glue today. The fine tip nozzle is what I'm enjoying, I think. There we go. Now we need to think of a name for this lady. What does she look like? She looks like... Um, a Marge, maybe? Is she a Marge? Or Doris? I feel like she could be a Doris. Yeah, maybe her name will be Doris. Okay, so we've got those rounded and my ink. Get rid of this. We don't need this anymore. And we'll put her on the opposite side. Than we did before. Maybe we could, maybe her identification could go this way. I know the lady did it like this as well. Wish I knew her name. She did have a really good idea. I might go back and subscribe because, yeah, new and fresh ideas are always fun, right? Okay, so what do we want? We need a different little swooshy swirl here, I think. I think that one. 
I don't know what this is from. I haven't a clue. I got it uh, from a friend many years ago who was getting out of stamping stuff and gave it to me, so I couldn't tell you where they come from. Oh, but those are the best kind, I think, the ones that you have no idea where they came from. Okay, so we want identification. And let's do, let's do the identification. No, let's stick in black. Mm, no, I wanna do it in red. So let's clean this off just so we don't get muddling of colors like that. I'm going to use the festive berries. Okay. And that'll be identification. And if you have other Tim Holtz, the lady also um, had different other Tim Holtz packs. Again, I'll link the video down below um, that she used. Um, there's one by Kathy Hold. I think it's Kathy Holden. Um, the signature. No, is it? I'm not sure who does it, but it was um, a stamp of signed signatures. I thought that was so cool. I just hand wrote mine and I even used, so for this lady here, I just hand wrote it, but I did use my inkwell and my feather pen to do that. I thought that was very posh. <laughs> I really want to use my, my dip pen um, more often. It's a lot of fun to write with. Okay, let's do stormy sky for our little it's not a filigree uh, what is it called I don't know what it's called I can't remember okay and we will put you right here maybe I should have done a darker blue Oh, no, that's okay. It stands out enough. Okay. And I have some other stamps here. Let's do... Maybe she's got like an A classification for something. We're not sure. That's what we're going to say. So let's do an A in the corner here. Okay. And what else do we want to do? Let's take a look at these other stamps. Oh, maybe she could work for the First National Bank, but that's like a check. Those are too big. Do I want to do this one again? Was it this one? No, I used the other one. Which one do I want to use? Oh, I did this postcard thing. Where did I put that? No. Oh, there it is. Um. Well, this actually has like a little signature on it and I think that would go good right there. So let's use this. I'm not sure what it is. It'll be a surprise. I don't know. But I think it'll work. Oops. Why don't you want to stick on there? Okay. Now I'm not even sure which way is up. Okay, no, I can tell now. All right, let's do this one down here. Like that. 
Yeah, I can't really read what it says, so I guess that's okay. Looks like a receipt, maybe? I'm not sure. Anyway, so it looks cute. Um, now I kind of... Do I want to put that? No, that's too much there. I could put that there. Or that one. Have I used this one yet? No. Maybe form will go down there. Like that. Just kind of need to fill in the space now is really what I'm trying to do. Um, and then I want to do the file again, I think. What do you guys think of that? I think that's cute. Okay, what do we want to start with here? Um, let's take this one off. And let's start with the filed. Gosh, this is so much fun. I didn't think I would really be into it as I was, but... Put that there. Filed. Super. Okay, like that. And then do I want that one there? Yeah, that'll be fine. I'm starting to overthink things now, so I know I just need to hurry up and stamp it down before I do that. Okay. We go down there. And then we'll put this little form one on. Yeah, yay! These are so much fun. You can create little backstories for them. Yeah. So here's the first one that I did. You guys see that? And then this is the second one, Mr. James R. Taboo. And then I called her Doris. Yeah. Doris. So those were so much fun. I'm going to probably continue playing around with these after I let you guys go. I hope that you found this video interesting. Um, again, I can't take the credit. This was from Original Idea at Sunset Crafts and More. Uh, so yeah, head over and check out her channel as well. Thanks so much for joining me today for a quick video, guys. And P.S. I love you.